So, we've done the hard work, we've created all the documents, we've submitted it on time, we've managed to build our cars, and you've managed to get to the event. Now the hard work begins. The event split off into two main categories, the statics and the dynamics. Of course, statics feature the cost event, and that comes before we get to take the car on track. But there is a lot of work that we need to do to get ready for these events and make sure that we do well at these events. Before we touch on that, it's important to know the type of people that are going to be judging you. Some of these judges have been with the event right from the start, so literally decades of experience, not just in Formula Student, but out in the industries that they're working in as well. We have cost engineers, cost engineers for the private sector, for the public sector, for military. We have supply chain experts. We have um, machining experts. We have charity managers. We have project managers. But all um, the common thread that runs through these is they recognise just how important good cost management is out in industry and in your life as well. Um, budgeting is fundamental to your own personal life just as it is for your um, professional life. And I cannot stress enough, cost will be at the forefront of everything you do in your careers. There will be very, very few roles where cost is not a consideration. And this is equally applicable if you have aspirations for Formula One. There will still be a cost constraint to what you do. Resources are finite. And whether that resource is labour or whether it is materials, it all has a pound note associated to it. This is what the cost event is there for. The judges that you will be in, engaging with on the day know this and they have to live and breathe it on a day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully they can impart the knowledge of, of their experience. So in terms of what to expect when you actually arrive for judging, well, first of all, you should be well prepared. You should have all your cost documents printed out. So these are the outputs from the uh, online tool, but also your supporting documents that you've got here as well and your cost explanation pack. Have at least one printed copy. I would have two or three. So you've got backups. And you may also want to split that out into the subsections. Make sure there is one printed copy that you can use that it fulfills the rules. But from there on, you can jazz that up however you want to. They need to be presented in a professional way, but not change from the format. But if you want to bind it, if you want to put a cover on it, if you want to make it look you know, as professional as you can, that's down to you. What you need to do is make sure that you've got all your supporting documentation and artefacts ready. So if you've got examples, say for instance, of your impact attenuator where you've done some testing, where you can show the materials and those sort of things, um, any mock-ups that you've done to test manufacturing processes, any finishing that you've done, bring that along. It might not be referred to, but you've at least got it in a box to pull out if a judge goes, can you show me an example of that? Again, you might want to produce some wall um, diagrams that judges can be referred to. Um, again, we're not necessarily going to go and look at those, but it's there if you need it. If it was me doing the event again, I would make sure that I had all this information and literally plan it like a NASA moon mission. Have all the information there so you can go to any artifact or any document and explain what you've done and justify what you've done. Um, that gets you up to the event, uh, up to the point of judging. Whatever happens, make sure that you're on time. And by on time, I mean at least 15 minutes early. So you've got to be ready to go so that when the judging team is, is ready, they can switch on and you can maximise your time. This means planning when you intend to be in scrutineering or any other uh, element of the event. If you are in scrutineering, and you miss that judging session, that's on you. You need to plan that. That's all about making sure your resources are in the right location. Now, one other thing I need to stress about this event is there have been occasions in the past where teams have gone, we're not going to focus on cost. We want to get through scrutineering. I cannot stress enough how badly this reflects on your team. 
not just because it's a cost event and I'm involved with it, but because it's any element of the event. They, it's not there for fluff or for, for, for window, uh, window dressing. It's there because we think it has a valuable aspect to the overall event and to your education as young engineers. If you choose to not do that part of it, you can probably understand there's going to be a lot of frustrated judges who have given up their own time, that have taken leave from their own personal uh, allotments to come and help you. We are going to be naturally upset if you go down that route, so please don't do that. Um, there will be penalties that are associated and they have been handed out in the past because of teams that just haven't committed to all elements of the event, so please look into that. So, you're now at the event, you're on time, you're ready to go. How should you be dressed? How should you uh, present yourself? Well, professionally. Now, that might for you mean a shirt and tie. It might mean team kit. It might mean that you are polite and courteous. That's entirely up to you, and it's how you want to set the vibe of your team. And we leave that to you. I've had teams that have come to me that have been literally covered in oil, and um, repairing the car, but they've been polite and engaged, and they've known the stuff, and they've scored just as much as a team that have come to me dressed in full suits and liveried up. It's entirely up to you. We want to focus on content. We want it to be collaborative. We want to feed back to you. We want to have that conversation and learn about all the amazing parts of your car. So make sure that you can convey that to us. And if that means setting aside people who are allocated to do costs, that's great. But if it means just gathering around as a team and, and engaging and, and bouncing off each other, that works too. It's, 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 it's very much um, subjective and up to you as a team how you want to do that. So you will get 45 minutes with the judges. It will pass in a flash of an eye. You think 45 minutes, crikey, how am I going to fill that? It will go. The content will just fly by. We will normally start off the first 15 or 20 minutes. We want to do an audit of your car. So we will look at um, a single part from the costed uh, element, so somewhere on the frame and body. And one of the judges will say, show me X component on the car and show me that in your cost document. And they will expect you to be able to turn to that page straight away without a moment's notice show it on the car and explain it. They will measure that component and make sure that what your documentation says is actually what's on the car. There are penalties, and these are all listed within the rules and within the, the supporting information that we've done, for if you fail to mention any processes or missing any components or any sections. It's really, really important that you don't drop marks um, uh, at this stage. If you fail to put in the documents correctly or if you fail um, uh, to highlight these parts or elements, these penalties can rack up quite significantly. And when you get into the top end, there is only like 15 or 20 points between um, uh, teams in the final standings. This is where the points can be won or lost. You can get these, you can bank them before you've even turned a wheel. So it's really important to get your accuracy correct. So we'll spend that first 15, 20 minutes auditing the car. We'll make sure that everything's correct. This is the time when you can really show your extra knowledge. So we'll be asking you to refer to your labor rates. How have you costed that? How, is it, how has it been manufactured? Show your manufacturing knowledge. It isn't just about knowing um, the out and out cost of your car. How would you make it if it was mass produced? What other alternative materials did you think about? How did you justify that? What is the scientific reasoning for justifying it? So bearing in mind that the judges are looking for you to wow them. They want to be in a position where you give them so much confidence they cannot do anything but give you top marks. So for instance, if you've done a, your um, frame and body, let's say we've gone for a space frame. Um, how did you get to that space frame? Well, a poor example is the team before did it. Another poor example is, well, we got free tubular steel and we, Dave can weld, so we did it that way. A good example was, well, we did the exercise, the feasibility study, we looked into um, uh, a composite tub, we looked into a honeycomb uh, monocoque structure, um, we did the analysis, we did the weight analysis, we did the cost analysis, we did the manufacturing ease analysis, we flowed it all out, this is the table that generated the output, and everything being equal, it said frame and body. Now, it might have said composite monocoque, but at the end of that, we could justifiably turn around and say, but 
we had a lot of spare tubular steel or we had a sponsor and we felt we had to go down that route because it would be the best way to go. That's fine as long as you've done the due diligence to prove that that was the right way to go in the first place and explain that to the judges and show your reasoning. Again, it's not about the ultimate end position, it's the methodology and logic that you've applied and the reasoning to get to where you've got to. So I think that's really important. Again, show your higher level knowledge by talking about how your costs have been associated. So especially in the UK event, we've opened it up now to include on costs for fixed assets, for depreciation for machinery um, and premises. And the reason we've done that is these are the real world examples that you'll be talking about when you get out into industry and they'll all needed to be costed into the, into the equation. And we think that's really important to try and get a sample of that at formula student level. Um, it's really important though, if you are planning on taking part in some of the European events, some of our colleagues and partners out there do it slightly different. So make sure you check those um, supplementary regulations and, and conform to them accurately. The second half of judging is all about wowing the judges. Now this is the opportunity where you want to, um, you want to really take them on a journey of why you've done something. In an ideal world, you will steer the, steer the judges in the direction of the innovative parts of your car. And innovative can be, this is really Gucci and it's an amazing part and it's going to make us go quick. But also, innovative for a cost judge could be, well, look at how cheaply we've made this. Look at how we've manufactured it or we've repurposed it or we've chosen to go down a sustainable route and we've used some sustainable fibres or we, we have an enhanced recycling. Guide them in that direction. One of the things that I always um, uh, uh, encourage students to do is right at the start of the judging or even at the start of this part, ask the judges what they want to see. Say, I can deliver whatever you want in this session but I want to make sure that I give you what you need. So tell me, are you interested in the manufacturing side? Are you interested in specific costs? Do you want to hear about the performance of the car, the design of the car, and how that, that um, feeds into the costing of the car? Tell me what I need to tell you, because I'm confident I can give you that information. That's a very, very powerful position to put yourself in, because you are delivering ultimately exactly what that specific judge wants. Bearing in mind that they only live and breathe Formula Student for maybe one weekend, maybe two weeks of the year with pre-marking. You are living and breathing it for 52 weeks of the year and beyond in, in uh, earlier years and future years and whatever. So you, you probably know more about this car and certainly the event than these guys know. They are very focused. So if you guide them in that direction, you are going to be onto a winner to start with. So once you've started having those general discussions, you've gone through the auditing side, you've proved that your cost documents are, are correct and they tally up with the car that's there. You've told them about the wonderful innovative bits. You need to summarise. It's really, really important in anything that you do. The first thing and the last thing are probably the most memorable. So if you've hit the ground running, you've been polite, you've been respectful, professional, that's, that's, that's start, that started the ball rolling. We've done all the stuff in the middle. How you end is really important because that's the image that they're going to take away. You need to try and find a way to leave them on a positive. So you need to try and find something that you've, you've basically kept to the end so you can end on a high or something that, that will keep your team memorable. And that's quite personal, that's individual to the team, but think about how you're going to present to the, to the judges and how you're going, to, you're going to leave them wanting more. And then this then will hopefully, if you've been successful, feed into what we ask you in the cost final. So just a little bit on the cost final. It normally happens on the Saturday evening. It normally happens for the top six, although if there's very tight at the top, we have been known to vary that a little bit as well. But what we're asking you to do at the cost final is validate what you've already said to the judges. So we'll normally have a series of questions that we will ask of all teams, and then the senior, judge, senior cost judges will go around and speak to all the different teams in the cost final. That way we'll be comparing like for like, and it helps us validate those last top five or six places. Um, 
It's normally quite stressful. It's a very quick fire hour. Um, so if you think the 45 minutes was, uh, was tough, the cost finals uh, even tougher, but then you're there because you're the best. So hopefully that shouldn't be too much of a challenge for you. It is a very, um, a very tough thing to do, to go there and present to um, industry leaders and people who have done this and people who are, who are senior, um, uh, senior people in their industries. Um, there's no ifs or buts about that. It, 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 cost judging and any sort of the static judging is, is a, an assault on your preconceptions of what is, uh, what is right and wrong. And sometimes that can be quite tough and sometimes it can be quite brutal. But I absolutely can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, um, I did Formula Student, I, I failed at a lot of things and I was successful at a lot of things in it. But I can tell you every experience that I had, good or bad, I still use every single day at work. It's, it's a toolbox of personal skills that allows me to be better at what I do. And not just at work, in, in my family and in my personal life as well. It really can give you that insight into how to sell an idea, how to cost something and how to be confident about the work that you've created. Um, hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into what uh, to expect on the day and generally what to expect for cost judging as well. If you have got any further questions, always ask them in the FSQD uh, on the iMeki account um, and uh, failing that tweet me or um, reach out in any other way and hopefully we can answer those questions for you. Failing that see me at the event and good luck and best of luck on your uh, cost of manufacturing event.